This is the In Good Time Podcast with Nick Lowe and Andrew Steininger. In this series of episodes, we take an in-depth look at some of the functionality and organization Google Sheets or any digital spreadsheet platform can provide to the classroom. Nick shows what system he has developed and how some of his additions have impacted his developing program. Part one takes a look at utilizing various formulas and data tables to develop an efficient scheduling, lesson group, and general information system. Hey, welcome back to the In Good Time podcast. Uh, me and Andrew today are going to be looking at uh, some Google spreadsheets and how you can use it to um, maximize efficiency. Um, I've done a lot of this work on my own. I use it. Uh, I've used it for the last two years. Um, and Andrew is, uh, I, I think, less experienced in this realm. Is that right? Yeah, I do use Google Excel myself, but it's not nearly as uh, in depth as you are going to go. And I, I think all teachers know the benefit of keeping lists and keeping information organized, but this takes it to the next level. And it actually makes like there's not a whole lot of technology that will make you a better teacher. But I, this, in my opinion, gives you a tool that actually will make you a better teacher because you just have information. Right. Uh, and so this is meant for teachers who don't already have something in place. Like my school uses, uh, it's like power school or something like that for a lot of attendance stuff. But since I'm not in the grade book, um, I don't necessarily have access to the same stuff. So what we'll walk through today, um, I'll give you a brief overview. I've got uh, my band page with all of the information that I use on here. Um, same thing for my orchestra. I'll we'll walk through this kind of totals page and what those different colors mean. Um, and this is where it gets fun. We've got a master schedule and then a weekly schedule. Um, and so we'll walk through each of those pages and, and how I use them. And hopefully you guys will have some takeaways. Uh, we will talk about some very, uh, more basic formulas that I use. Um, so, uh, if, if that's it, Andrew kind of is working as, as a little bit of the audience. So if my mumbo jumbo gets confusing, I'm sure he will, he'll ask, uh, uh, some questions. So first off, we've got the, uh, band and the orchestra page. Now these are actually the same exact information um except it's a different ensemble so there's really no information in here that's different it's just if if you at uh are, are thinking yeah i'd like to use this information um we'll have we'll i'll click that share button um feel free to make a copy of this and you know delete what you don't need so um what I take is student ID number, first uh, first name, obviously, and you can see here that they're all example names. I was having fun coming up with just, it's just <laughs> the alphabet. Uh, and then I always have a column for their nickname uh, because, you know, sometimes you just can't remember what they like to be called. So I have a little nickname thing. And then everybody's last name is example, so that's good. Student email is very important, um, especially this year uh, where everybody is, uh, or at least everybody started remote learning. Um and so, you know, that contact was really important. Um, of course, you're going to write down um, what instrument they play, um, what teacher they have, if you're at the elementary level, um, uh, what group for lessons they're in, or you could put what band they're in if you're uh, middle school or high school. Uh, whether the student is renting, this is just a simple yes, no. Uh, where are they renting from? So for me, uh, I use two different companies, uh, my band uses Instrument Barn, uh, and then uh, my orchestra uses Cassandra Strings. So you can actually see a couple different codes here. Um, if they're renting from the Instrument Barn, it's IB, uh, family-owned. HMS, that's our middle school, Heinemann, and so they, they give out um, some baritones and whatnot. Looks like we do have... I, I copied this and then just changed the name. So it looks like one of my percussionists is, is renting from my orchestra one. So, oh well, what can you do? Uh, continuing on here, uh, I like to put um, just some some codes, and usually I have these rows hidden, uh, just in case anybody else happens to be looking at it, they won't see this. Um, and I'll tell you how to do that in a second if you don't know, but just some little 
quick things so I can see that, oh, Andrew example, he's got a 504 and dual language. So if, you know, I'm going through stuff and I just need quick facts of how many of my students have a 504, I can just pull it up real fast and see, okay, there's one, two, three. Uh, um, oops. So Sorry, Nick, before you, before you move on uh, too much from that, how do you fill out this Excel? Do you do it all manually or do you do it? Um, Cause I have done in the past, I've used a Google form. Like I'm making my band inventory music inventory. And I use a Google form to populate most of the rows. Do you have, do you input this all by yourself? No. So at the beginning of the year, um, what I do is when students and families are registering, I have them do um, basically all of this stuff. So they, t it's like question one, student ID, first name, um, nicknames. I'll, I wait until you know the year starts. Last name, your student email, what instrument they're picking, who their teacher is, group I do myself. Um, but then um, if they're renting, I, I have them do this uh, part as well. Um, and some of it, like if it's a family owned instrument, um, you know, they, they type that out on the form. And so it comes up that way. Uh, it, it does a lot of the times you do have to kind of tweak the information because it auto generates mm -hmm. a spreadsheet. And so you kind of tweak it to, to see what you like, you know, and whatnot. So um, a, ma a majority of this like preliminary information was inputted for you via Google form. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So at, 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 um, you can have on Google Forms, there's an option to generate a spreadsheet based off of response data. And if you click that, it does it automatically. It looks yeah. awful. Um, so you, <laughs> you, I mean, you really have to tidy it up uh, yeah. to make it look presentable and, and not ridiculous. But, um, and of course, it's really important to have parent um, contact information. So first name, last name, email. Um, I like to do two parents and on that Google form that auto generates this parent one is always required. Parent two is not required because uh, we, we want to be inclusive of, of families who maybe only have one parent around. Some things that are, are, are talking about how to set this up. Um, the real, real, real basics. If you want to add a new spreadsheet, it's simply this new plus button down there. Um, it'll come up with something and it'll name it. Obviously I have a lot of sheets. Um, it's going to be crucial for later that if you are making a new sheet, um, that you give it a name without any spaces. So you can look over here and see master schedule. I just capitalized the S there's no spaces. Um, visually, maybe it, it might be a little confusing at first uh, to look at, but when we get to our totals page and we start working with some of those formulas, having spaces can just sometimes uh, mess things up. Um, I like to do row one as a different color and bold. It makes it super easy to see exactly what I'm looking at. That's the most important um, categories, categorization, whatever the word is for my information that I'm looking at. Um, the other thing that is an absolute must is you can see if I scroll down, row one stays exactly the same. And if I scroll left, right, those first couple rows stay the same as well. So I always know what student I'm looking at, okay? So what you can do is if you go to view, you'll see this option freeze. You could freeze one row, freeze up to whatever column you're working on. And that freeze tells it to always just be in place. Okay. Um, let's say that, okay, I have learned their nicknames. I don't need this anymore. Select column C and just say hide column. And then you get this nice little arrow and it takes it away. Um, and that makes it easier. You know, you can do the same thing with, all right, I don't need their student ID number. Hide the column, bingo. It's nice and easy. Um, another and, thing. And oh, just to just to make sure, and, and this might sound stupid, um, but when navigating the computer, Nick is right clicking on his mouse, right? Just to get mm -hmm. that drop down menu. Yes. Um, and uh, a lot of what you can do on your computer, there are often multiple ways to do it. So usually in that drop down menu that you can get from clicking right, you can also get to that type of stuff from your um, your toolbar up top, the file edit, view, insert, all that good stuff. Yes, you you are absolutely correct.
Um, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that. Um, another thing that is an absolute must with any spreadsheet that you use ever is, uh, if you could see this little triangle thing, this is called a filter. Um, and the way that you apply it is you just select row one, um, you come over to here and you click this little icon. Uh, right now I have them on so I can turn it off. Um, but, uh, you just click it to turn it on and then you are all set. And what the filters can do, uh, is, is a really great organizational tool. So you click on this and it comes up with, you can sort it alphabetically. Um, you can sort it anti or backwards alphabet, uh, color. Great. Okay. Um, but the, the best thing is down here. So let's say I want to send an email to all of my, uh, clarinet players. Okay. You clear and then you click on clarinet, click on okay. And all of a sudden, boom, you are only looking at your clarinets. Okay. And then you can just, you know, highlight these copy paste, and then you're good to go. Um, I use that constantly. Yeah. You have to have it, you know, especially if you're trying to like, you know, okay, I want all of my students from Mr. A's class and I only want the percussion players. So you'd go to Mr. A in that one column, you'd go to percussion and now, oh, okay, there's one percussion player in Mr. A's class. That, se that seems like that would be a critical tool in just accessing information on the fly. Yeah, it, it's all of this takes time to set up but once you set it up you only have to do it once you know you can use the same spreadsheet and just you know recycle the data every year for the and input your new stuff and, and it, it this has saved me so much time in looking up different information okay so it's kind of looking over here you can see that um some of the boxes are highlighted different colors okay uh so what this is called is conditional formatting and it's what it Conditional formatting is it takes or it looks for a certain criteria and then highlights or shades in the box and if a number meets that um, criteria. So what we're going to do in order to set that is it's under format. Scroll all the way down here. Conditional formatting. And this will take you to this little menu over here. Um, and you've got some, some color options. But let's say that in my... Um, or let, let's cancel so we can add a rule. Okay, so if I click on column I, we can see that there's two rules applied to it. Uh, the first rule is if the cell is empty, okay? So uh, apply to range. If you click on this little thing, it'll ask what range would you like? You can say just one box or you can say, okay, I want all of column I and you can see it, it automatically changes it for you. Um, let's say I want from this first one all the way down to my last box. Great. So you're going to click on this. You click on or hold shift, click, and bingo. It automatically fills it out there. Um, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then format the cells if. Okay, so this is where you get a couple different options. Let's say because I'm looking for just anybody who isn't, I don't know if they're renting or not. Like I just haven't put the data in yet. We could say if the cell is empty. Um, we'll get into some of these other ones, um, a little later, if not the next one, but there's a lot of really good options there. You can set it to look for very specific things. Like if the text specifically says, I think that's my question mark one that I've got over here. It's like, if it is a, if it, the text is exactly a question mark, it will highlight it for you. Um, you've got some formatting, uh, styles. Uh, you can change what you want it to, uh, to do, you know, Want it to bold? Do you want it to make a color? I really like the color ones because it's so crystal clear compared to everything else on there. So once you've set your rule, all you have to do is click on done. If you'd like to add another rule, um, just a plus. Now this will add it to the current column that I've got highlighted. If I want to do it for the entire thing, if you click uh, in the top left of your entire spreadsheet, um, and add a rule. Now it's applying it to the entire range of the spreadsheet. Um, another thing that I find very useful is if you look on uh, some, but not all of my columns, like instrument, teacher, and group, they have this little 
uh, thing right there. And what that is is a drop down menu of all of the options. And this is really important because if I typed flute for all of my flute players, and let's say I have a typo, if you filter, there'll be two flute options, the one that's spelled correctly and then the one that's not spelled correctly. And then it's just like, okay, you're going to miss students and whatnot. So um, this is called a data validation. So if we go to insert again, okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's under. Uh, it, it, it was under data. Was it? Yeah, right under the oh, slicer. They, yes. So data validations right there. So we'll click on data validation. And let's say that we want it all in column F. So we'll highlight column F there. Okay, and that's the cell range. Um, generally, I don't do the entire thing because it'll have like the, uh, th this says instrument, which is not the word flute. And so, you know, that doesn't, it, it'll come up with a, whoa, this doesn't work. So I go from um, the first row of data down to the last one. Okay, and we'll highlight that, or, or we'll make that our range here. So, um, whoop, okay, great. So that's our range. Uh, and then we're going to go list from a range, and this looks very confusing. Basically, this is just asking, what are we pulling from? And so in this case, I'm pulling from all of these things. So I set this as the range. So when I go to select an instrument, the only options I can have are the options that are in my band. So let's say that um, your school does not have tuba. If you get rid of tuba and then select this, it, it won't show tuba there. And you can add other instruments, you know, tenor saxophone, um, the bassoon, uh, whatnot. Uh, under orchestra, it's the same thing too. So you can see it's all violin, viola. And if I click on that, now I only have those four options. So Nick, when you selected that range, mm -hmm. did you select from that other sheet to to inform that uh, that data validation? Yeah. So let's let's take a look at this. Um, what this is saying is it's looking at the totals sheet, which is down here. And then it's looking at A2 through A11. And I'll explain later what the exclamation point and the dollar signs mean. But basically, mm -hmm. that's what it's looking. So if we look at A2 through A11 on my total sheet, A2 through A11 is right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I set this as the range of possible things. And then I use this same spreadsheet, actually, the totals for the teachers. So that'll be... Uh, B1, C1, and, and whatnot, that whole one column, if we look at that under under teacher. Um, for data, data validation. Um, select it wrong. But it, that's, that's what it is, is pulling from. Um, so if we drop it down, now we see only our teacher options. Okay. Um, so let's actually move now into that totals page. And this is where um, it's going to get a little formula heavy. Um, so you know, I will do my best to explain this in, in layman's terms. I am a layman myself. My dad um, does some web design. And so, so he works with this kind of stuff. Um, but um, I like to do uh, two different types of tables. So my first tables are... Um, or this style where it tells me how many students of each and whose class they're in. And the second one is my groups, which all it does is say, hey, loop one, you've got two kids in it. Um, and when the, no, I, so I just, you know, I used the kids of letter of the alphabet. I gave one. So there's only 26 kids. Not going to be as important, but you know, um, this year I've got 76 kids. And so balancing groups if I've used this, then it tells me, oh, I can see, hmm, every group has two kids except for clarinet two and flute one, two. Maybe I should try to rebalance it and stuff like that. Um, so oh, setting up setting up these tables, did you do that manually as well? Just yeah. The, uh, like the outlines and the colors and... Yep. So I'll, I'll, I'll go over each piece of this. Uh, the colors is actually conditional formatting. Um, okay. 
So we'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll mention what it's doing in a minute, but um, to just set up a table, um, you know, you just type, you type in um, your teachers on the top, your instruments on the left hand side. And then if you click in the first in a one and you click on that bottom totals thing um, to make it look all pretty, you can come over here to the borders tool and then select outside. And what this is saying is it'll put a nice black line around everything, but not in the middle. Uh, if you want to change it to a dotted line, like I've got to divide the totals, uh, it's this border style and you simply select uh, whatever that is. Um, and I will say these are kind of finicky. Uh, so uh, it, like if you say, you know, I want this one to have a top border and then you copy paste. So sometimes it gets messed up, but it's never too difficult to get it reset. Oh, and again, I always like to have this blue up at the top just as a visual, like here's exactly what I'm looking at. Um, okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is actually our totals. We're going to use an equals sum. So basically, if I click on this box now, instead of the number six, you see the formula that's in the box. Uh, and what this is saying is it's a sum, which is basically just basic addition for B2, a colon, which means the word through B11. Okay, so it's looking for numbers in B2 and going all the way through B11 and just simply adding them what are adding what's there. So if you type that in your first one, then you can actually just copy and paste here, 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 here. And what the cool thing is, is that Google will automatically change the letter as you move into a different column. Um, and you don't have to like retype it. So once you've, you, once you've typed that, you're good to go. After you've done the columns, then you'll come over here to your rows. And these ones are um, essentially the same thing where you're just looking B2, but now instead of B2 through B11, you're looking at B2 through G2, which is this range right here. And you're coming up with a total. So uh, this number, is simply the total of all of your totals <laughs> and which is why i said to do it with the columns uh or sorry the rows second uh because this is pulling from it's the same formula as other rows are uh so i, I do the same thing with my orchestra numbers and then the combined total is a slightly different uh language you're still going to have that sum uh capitals non-capitals it doesn't matter it's not specific so this happens to be not um, this, you'll notice uh, there's two different colors, and that's because they're separated by a comma here. Um, unlike the um, colon, which says it means through, a comma means the word and. And so this is summing, uh, summarizing, or whatever the word is, B12, which is our first total, and B19. So it's adding 6 and 6 to get 12. Uh, this one, your total of the totals, is going to be the same thing. You're just taking the sum of your first total totals box and then your second total total box can i say the word total any more times <laughs> this this the sum tool in excel spreadsheets and i i have some experience with using the sum tool um just from my own home budgeting uh, budget spreadsheet the sum tool is something that i think everybody should know if you're you know you just your basic knowledge about excel what you can do to practice that is literally just input a whole bunch of random numbers and then play around with the formulas, really hitting equal, typing in sum, and then getting to know how to input different values. So like you said, doing a range with the colon, um, adding this, this area through this area, or doing regular addition with a comma. You had, okay, I only want this box and this box and this box. Yeah, and the really nice thing that, that um, Google does, I don't know if um, Excel uh, Microsoft Excel does this as well. I'm sure it does. But if you type equals and then you start typing sum, okay, it's going to automatically come up with all these things and it defines it. If you click on that, um, it'll automatically bring up a box of exactly what you have to do in order to make it work. So it always looks more complicated than it really is. Um, but, it, you know, it, I, I've played around with that typing in different things um, and then just kind of figuring out, oh, maybe I could use this for this scenario. So um, it, it, we're, I'll actually show you in the next box kind of where that question mark comes up because uh, when I was planning out how to talk you through this, I thought, well, let's go easiest to hardest. And then I'm like, that's 
not going to quite work. So we're about to go from zero to 100 real fast. Take a look right up in our function box at this monstrosity. One one more thing before we jump into that. All of this is dependent on typing in that equal sign into our function box, which is the thing that says FX at the top. Um, if we don't have the equal sign, you're basically just inputting text. Right. Yeah, exactly. So the equals takes it from um, data to a formula. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to look at count ifs, um, which is if if we click on it we can pull up this little thing and then this tells you exactly what it is so it returns the count of a range depending on multiple criteria so in layman terms what this is looking for is um you are looking for you'll see the number one okay so it it's looking for on our band spreadsheet how many flute players are in Mr. A's class? Okay, and this is this box would be how many flute players are in Mrs. B's class. Okay, so um, it's the the count part is just the total. If is that criteria? So we're looking for um, the that it's a flute player, and ifs plural means that it's looking on two criteria. So later uh, on, um, I'll walk you through this one, and you can see this is just count if singular because there's only one criteria that we're looking for but in this one we're looking for a flute player from this certain person's class so let's go over how to actually type in um this thing here so first off you'll notice that it says band and then an exclamation point the exclamation point lets this know that we're looking in a different sheet so it's pulling from our band spreadsheet the information into this one. So if we just typed in F1, F64, it's going to look on this same one. Uh, so after typing in band and then exclamation point, uh, we're going to type, we're going to look in our band spreadsheet for what column we're looking at, which we want the instrument first. So that's in column F. So we want from F1, because it doesn't really matter. Uh, or like the word instrument doesn't really matter. So that's fine because we only want it to look for the word flute. So F1 through like F27, great. Okay. Um, you can see I say it's 64, it doesn't matter. As long as that, because we're using um, a little colon here, which means through. So as long as you put some really high number as your second one, you'll be good to go. Um, now the dollar signs mean the word freeze. Uh, and so what that means is I've frozen in the formula column F at row one through and then frozen column F through frozen column or row 64. So I can actually, once I've done doing this formula, I can copy paste that same formula to every single one of these boxes. And because this is frozen, it'll always look in column F. If we didn't freeze this, if we were to copy paste this over one, it would look in the next column over it would look in column g because it it automatically adjusts so we make we make sure that that's frozen um so it's always pulling from that instruments one okay so now we've got a little comma here to separate um our search from what we're searching for so you'll see all the commas are black and that's because they're always a separation of two ideas um, so we, we're looking at A2. So we've we've typed where to search, okay? And now we want, well, what is it searching for? And in this case, I have a frozen A2, okay? And so this is freezing A, it's not freezing three. You'll notice over here, I have frozen F and frozen 64, whereas this one is just frozen A. So what this is saying, frozen A3, is it's looking on this spreadsheet for A3, which is a clarinet. So that when it looks in this box, it's looking for the word clarinet on another spreadsheet. And the reason that the three is not frozen is because when we copy paste, take a look. It's at three now, now it's four. And so it automatically cycles through. The second half is pretty much identical to the first half where we're looking in band again, but this time, instead of looking for an instrument, we're looking for the teacher. So that is in column G. We want to know who their teacher is. Uh, so for the second criteria, 
And then we want it to be B1. So it's looking for B1, which is the teacher. And of course, this time, unlike the first one, where we froze A, but not 3, this time we're going to unfreeze B and freeze 1. Okay, and that's because in the first criteria, um, we're copy and pasting uh, rows. And in the second one, we're copy pasting columns. And so that's just telling it what to automatically cycle through. I'm, I'm just thinking of a way to, um, to take this down one, uh, what's the word? Like, like language level. So just, just for everybody that might not be following at this point in time, all that we're doing is we're turning our understanding of the, the spreadsheet so like we're like just for example nick can you click on the flute in mr a just that mm -hmm. number one all we're doing is we're translating for the computer because the computer uses a different language than we do we know that if we looked on that other spreadsheet and we did it with our eyeballs we could find how many flute players are in mr a's class we could physically look and see that but we are what we're doing here is you're translating that visual our visual understanding of that into a written formula that the computer searches for and then does the addition for us so all of those um all of the the different colors and formulas up there translate to a different search parameter so like nick, nick explained this very well before uh but just in case you needed a little like more human <laughs> a more human description of it the orange section that says band exclamation point uh, money sign, which is freeze F, freeze one, colon through in the rest of that formula. That's referring to the computer is looking on the band spreadsheet to find flutes in, well, it's looking at, yeah, find flutes in F1 through F64. Right. So it, it's looking on the band page in a certain range of columns to find if that has um, the specific thing in it, if it has flute in it. Exactly. And then further from that, it's still only going to count, give us a number if all of those criteria are met, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if, if it's not, if it doesn't work, um, like let's say you just leave that off, it's just gonna be an error. Uh, and then you can see all of the different formulas that break <laughs> because of that. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned the colors up here. Google does that automatically. So you do not have to know that your first item has to be orange. You don't have to type it in orange font. It'll actually start typing in whatever first color it decides. Um, so it does it automatically. The colors that you can add down here with the conditional formatting uh, are not, you know, by any means necessary. I like them because it tells me, it, it helps catch my eye. So obviously you can see there's a lot of zeros in this class uh, and that's because there's only, you know, 26 students. But, um, you know, to make it easier to look at what actual instruments we have in whose class, um, we've got two different types of conditional formatting, okay? And we want this formatting to apply to th from the first one down to the last one. So we're going to, uh, le left click, uh, hold the shift button and then left click again down here. And then we can go to format conditional formatting. And then we can see, oh, okay. There's two rules that are going on. If the value is between one and two, it's going to give this kind of light color that just says, oh, you can really easily see that it's not a zero. If it's greater than two, it's going to highlight it and kind of pop out. Um, and the reason that I'm, I do this is so that when I'm forming groups, I can tell right off the bat, okay, there's three alto saxophones in Mrs. E's group. So that's one group that I can make really easily. They're already right there. I don't have to look at any schedules or anything like that, um, if that's a requirement for you. Um, I, I have them set pretty low for this one. Obviously, if you've got more students, maybe... Oh, one or two is a good threshold. So maybe you could say, okay, if there's three students, 
in their class it'll be that color and if there's more than five i'll highlight it because there's wow there are a lot of people in that class and i've got the same thing going down here too so i can see oh wow right off the bat there's three groups of three that i can make so now if i'm making if i want all of my groups to be groups of three bingo bango bongo and now i only have to combine other types of things yeah it's it's just another layer of organizing that mm -hmm. you are telling the computer i want you to do this automatically right exactly uh so then going over to this this is going to be like child's play compared to what we what we just did <laughs> because it's only count if singular so the only criterion that is is looking at it want i we want to know how many kids are in this flute group okay so um, what this is saying is we're going to equals count if, and then we're looking on the band spreadsheet. So type band exclamation point. Then we're going to freeze column H1 through H34. So if we look over at this, what is that? Oh, it's our groups. Okay. So this we have to put in automatically. You figure out what, what group the kids in and it'll, um, it'll do that. And then uh, we're looking, okay, comma to separate the idea. And we want it to look for J2. And there's there's no exclamation point. So it's on this spreadsheet. So J2. We're looking at, okay, flute one. So this number is pulling for, if it's on a different spreadsheet, it says flute one, it's going to put it in this column. Now, the really cool thing about this is, uh, check this out. Two. Okay, let's go over to our, our band spreadsheet and use our filters uh, to look at just the flute players. Awesome. Okay. Uh... Well, you know what? Do I really want a group of uh, of two and a group of one? Nah, let's just make just one flute group, okay? So I'm gonna do that drop-down menu, which only has the options that are available as groups. I'll select flute one. Now, if we look at our totals, it's automatically gonna update three kids and zero. So it, it makes balancing a, a really easy thing to visualize and it helps uh, alleviate any mistakes you might make as well because you know we're, we're all human and I've made a million m mistakes and this has helped me catch many of them. So um, that's how we use that. This is one area where learning uh, the formulas and taking the time to learn how to navigate a spreadsheet, uh, this is where it becomes incredibly useful. For, and for anybody that's not tech savvy, I promise, even if this is like really complicated for you, there is a level of this that you can use that is going to be helpful to you. Uh, because if, if you can get to a point where you kind of understand what the computer is doing and you only have to manipulate one or two different variables and the computer is doing the rest of the work for you, that saves you so much time rather than scribbling down multiple sheets of paper and crossing things off and erasing things. And, and this is, is far superior to that in almost every way. Right. And, and like I said, um, you know, uh, near the beginning of this podcast, I'm going to make this spreadsheet um, shareable. I'll, I'll have it open and we'll have a link to it in the description. So if you'd like to just you know, you don't want to mess around with any of the formulas. You want it to work exactly how we've got it. Feel free to just make a copy of this uh, and use it to your heart's content. This information, it's, it's once you have it set up, if you have a student that drops or changes teachers or they switch instruments halfway through the year, as long as you put that in over here, your totals will reflect that. And so it makes it really easy to see, oh, you know what? I just had three oboes switch to to the trumpet it, okay now I, I i've got a trumpet group there that great awesome so it'll it'll reflect that that data that you are, are are working with live throughout the school year those three kind of all work together uh and now we're going to look at two other spreadsheets um that these two are kind of hand in hand um it looks way more challenging than it really is just because i love using colors so that I can visualize what I'm teaching. If you don't want colors on here and you just want the words, just don't conditional format it and then it'll just be like that. Okay, so this is my master schedule uh, and I set it at the beginning of the year and then it, I, it it's a ton of work to start, but then the copy paste gets started and then all throughout the year, if you've got a rotating schedule, you're an elementary school person, all you do is you type one letter each week and it automatically tells you what the next week's schedule is so it's really nice okay so the way that i set this up is in row one 
Uh, starting in column C, you're just going to type the weeks of the year. And I think this is uh, the 2019 school year. So this you do have to do manually. It's a hassle. There's probably a better way to do it. But if there is, just let me know. I, I would love to know what the, the quicker way is to do that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, column A, you're going to type the day of the week and then all of the options for the day. So if you know, okay, today's a woodwind day, bam, woodwinds, I always have a plan, I always have a lunch, and then on Mondays, I have a vendor that visits, you know, uh, it's the Cassandra Strings, or, or whoever it might be. It doesn't have to be in any order, it's just your options, and that we're going to use this for a data validation in a minute. Then column B is just your, your class periods or your times, so um, you can just kind of keep track of that. Uh, now, you'll notice that these are there's like heavy gray lines, and that's because I have frozen those columns so that we're always looking at, you know, our, our times as we scroll, and we're always looking at our weeks and, of the uh, year. If we go one one quick point of um, clarification here. When Nick says frozen in this context, it means something different than what we're talking about in the formula. So when, yes. when, when he says frozen here, we're just talking about the way that this spreadsheet um, deals with scrolling and the way it's presenting visual information for you when you put frozen or the the uh, dollar sign in the formula that's actually asking the computer to reference information data in, in a different way now that we've got our our setup um we'll we'll let's talk about how to make it look all, all pretty and nice so obviously i've got drop downs for each of them uh and this tells me exactly what i can put in a day which is really nice uh for the next step but in order to do that all you have to do is select um the first time of the first week scroll all the way to the end of your monday and you'll do this for every uh, day of the week and then we'll just we're just going to do a simple data validation if i can get the thing to come up and then list from a range, and then you can see it's A3 through A12, which is A3, flute 1 through A12, which is our vendor visit. Um, so the only options are the ones that we put there. Uh, and reason, again, it's it's helpful to avoid typos and, and stuff like that, and then looking, you know, silly or whatever. Okay, so um, the first step is you're going to put in the things that are consistent every single day. So if you click, if you put in, or let's, let's do this. I left... Uh, I left Thursday blank here. So you do plan, type, or you, you select it once, bingo, you copy, and you go paste, 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 <laughs> and you just do it the entire way. Um, uh, the next things that, that you're going to do once you've got those consistent things in is, is if you've got a rotating schedule, uh, then you're going to start the rotation. So um, if I scroll up, you can see it kind of shifts down every single week and this is saying just that the flute players are going to miss 9 30 to 10 the next week they'll be pulled 10 to 10 30 so the way the easiest way that i've found to do this is let's take our first group on thursday which looks like it's a flute group um oh i have i have a different data validation thing set up than i have over here okay um well th th that's okay uh so we'll we'll do our flute first and if you do flute one you drop down type or you, you you click flute one flute one skip all of your planning flute one flute one you're going to go until you've recycled it at the top so you can see that okay that goes until we're back at the top um right after 10 12 okay i just i did this extra row as an example to see that it stops but you can take this and copy paste throughout the rest of the year um so once you do one section of it, you don't have to do this again. Okay, so the way that I do this is we're going to go flute one, next column, flute one, flute one, flute one, okay, and all the way through. Then after you've done that, just the next one, flute two, flute two. And this helps you kind of keep track of it because then you're not like, you don't fill out one entire day, the next one, and then you realize your rotation's off somewhere. So you go through and then it just fills it out and then it loops around. And so you are doing all that manually, right? Yeah, this part, I have not figured out how to make this any quicker. Um, if anybody is, that watches this is, is is better at this stuff, please let me know because um, 
Yeah, I, I'd love to have that. Again, the good thing, though, is that now that I've made this my first year of teaching, I'm just going to use the same schedule every single year. And the only thing that might change is what the name of the group is. But the rotation is going to stay the same. And I, just the weeks are different. So the last thing that we want to do uh, when we're on this page is make some named ranges. Uh, and so the, the way that we're going to do that is under data, we'll say ah, named ranges. And you can see I have got five of them already set up. So it, it, when you add a range, if you click on this little thing, it just lets you, you can just highlight, okay, I want specifically this okay and then and then you're good to go on that um but the so, or so if we look at our five name ranges you could see they're just the day of the weeks monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so i i have kind of my little box that i have it's that except it goes all the way to an 79 which if we look back um at our columns here an 79 is the last week of the school year so the range is the entirety of Monday every single time and every single week. And that's going to come into play on this next one here. So um, I have two schedules. So this is what you look at to set everything up. And then in order to make it more visually easy, okay, you've got uh, the days of the week and then exactly what you're going to be doing each day uh, of of one week okay and so on this column we did a date uh, a data validation and you can see it's all the d the weeks of the year and so you're validating that coming from the master schedule up at the top here um and then we just have our times now these this is a really cool function um check out what happens if i so so there's nothing in here right now okay check out what happens if i fill this time with clarinet one okay we come back to weekly schedule and clarinet one fills in there automatically from what i'm seeing so far it looks like this weekly schedule page is kind of like our totals page where it's taking a bunch of information from our really data formula heavy sheet and then just giving us this really nice neat table that can yes. be edited based on what we put in that previous sheet. Exactly, right. So so this is your do it at the start of the year. This is the I'm in, you know, week nine and the clarinet one group meet like they've got a project and they have to come back later. Great. This is where you do that. And I, I like what you said about editing is that's I have this second one here and I'll explain what that one is in just a second from master schedule okay if we click on the first Monday time you're actually going to see that instead of the word plan it's actually a formula so this is a query and what a query is it's almost like I I, th I think about it like a shadow if that makes sense so the the about like what it actually does makes no sense to me runs a visual <laughs> That's, that's computer language. So what it's actually doing is it's looking at um, that named range that we just set up on the other page, which is Monday. And then you're telling it what to pull from. And so all it's doing is it's projecting a shadow, basically, of this information onto here. And I call it a shadow because this doesn't actually exist. It doesn't actually say flute one. Like, um, if we... Um, were to like type something else there, then all of a sudden it doesn't know what to do because this is actual information, and the other thing is just a uh, is is just like pr a projection of the page, um, and that's why there's no colors either. So the real information is here, and it's got colors, and this is just kind of a like a here's what it says on the other page. So what's really great about this is that. You only, you're, you, you, so you type query, you, look, you type the named range, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the uh, a comma to separate the ideas, and the quotation marks tells it, hey, I want you to look for something very specific. You're looking for, um, instead of just like, you're looking at a cell, you're looking for a specific information. So select is what you have to type. I don't remember why off the top of my head, but then you type C. 
And what C is saying is it's looking at column C, which is our first week here. So um, if I was going to be do a new week, let's say, okay, great. It's after the first week of the school year. Now we're going to go to 9-7. So I can just select this. Okay, it's 9-7. So when I print this out, it'll look all nice. Now, the only thing that I have to do, because we've already done all the hard work in our master schedule, is look at the next column. So the next week is D. And just instead of C, type D. Okay. Oh, sorry. Has to be capital. Okay. And it comes up with the next one. So, like, if you look at... Tuesday, okay, we've got plan, trumpet one, trumpet two. Okay, what do we have next week? Oh, percussion two is our first group next week. And so on and so forth. And I, when I was doing all, all this data, I didn't set it up for, for Thursday and Friday, but it would be the same thing there. It automatically rotates. So again, you all you have to do to make it automatically come up with the next week is type the next letter of the alphabet. So just to be clear about the formula, can you go back into the, the formula box so the first data point in there, the Tuesday, what is that referring to again? So Tuesday is looking for a named range. So you can see it says data. So here. that's what we did on the previous. Got it. Right, right. Uh, this one, I'm going to I'm gonna be honest. I'm not as like, oh, this means exactly this. I kind of just messed around with it until I got it to do mm. what I wanted to do. Um, so again, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. There might even be a way where you can change it once and it does all of them automatically. I don't know. But what this is pulling is from our named, our named range that we set up for Monday. Mm -hmm. And then it's looking for select D, which is that column D. Right. Um, so the reason that I have this second one over here is because, you know, nor if I had... Um, if I had filled all of Monday out and all of Thursday and Friday out, it would look like a full schedule. Um, but right now, I, I just didn't do that. Um, so what we can do is, because you, like you saw earlier, if I wanted to edit it and, well, maybe flutes aren't coming today, and you hit the backs or and like you type something else, all of a sudden, well, it stops doing the entire thing. So what you can do is just don't select the first one. So I'm going to select the second thing. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it over here. And all of a sudden, this is actual information. Um, so I can actually edit. Okay, I don't want lunch today. Well, it doesn't mess anything up. Great. Um, it, it does put something random. I, I can't figure out why it puts flute <laughs> to there. But you can delete that, no problem. And you can just retype. Okay, I've got a plan there. And I don't want it italicized, but whatever. Um, but so the nice thing about this is now that it's actual information, you can do two things with it. One, you can make edits like, okay, let's say I want uh, flute one to come here instead. Well, great. Awesome. Well, let's do that. And now it's no problem. But the other thing you can do is you can make this printable um, for your, your the, the teachers and the students and just delete all of the things that apply to you. Like, we'll get rid of my lunch. We'll get rid of the plan because the students don't need to see that. They only care about when their lessons are, which makes sense. So you're going to use, you'll, you'll print off the for display one for the students that you'll hand out for the week. And then you use this one to just keep track of your personal schedule. So like, um, if you know, you have a vendor visit on, um, let's see, uh, put in, okay. There's a vendor visit on week C. So just, it's like, okay. So obviously now you're looking at this and you go, Oh, okay. I have to go down to the office. Cause I know they're going to drop something off, but no one else cares about that, so it doesn't come up on on this one. That's pretty much it for how this one works. Um, so, real quick, Nick, for printing that one section, how exactly do you do that? Do you select the whole range and hit print? Mm, I, I'm glad that you said that. Okay, so if yeah, let's say that I, I want to print this, just this. So what you'll do is you'll highlight the first box, select all the way to the next box. Come up to the printer. I don't have a printer attached to this computer, so I don't know what it's going to do. Um, okay, great. Print instead of current sheet, because if you do current sheet, it's looking at everything on there. So all you're going to do is you're going to say selected cells. And then bingo, it's one sheet of paper. Um, you'll notice you might have to change the percentage. So if I just wanted it, or if it was normal, 
it looked like that uh and that is tiny so if you bump it up uh to 150 that makes it look nice uh i like it on landscape because um if you have it on portrait that also looks stupid you was third of the same friday there so you do you do landscape uh, i have it set to narrow margins um because if you do normal margins then it again it just smushes everything in but that's how you get it to do is just selected cells also i i i, I don't know um if you're you because i'm sharing my screen i don't know if we're looking at the exact same thing but i have more sheets up here than i do tabs um and to see what those other sheets are you can come over to this all sheets thing and we can see that I, i've got a band seating chart and orchestra seating chart in there there are no formulas on these um and this is you know ba as basic as it gets but if you've got other sheets that you want to use you know like if, if you've got a seating chart um or if you've got maybe you want to put your um instrument inventory on the same one i do that in a different spreadsheet and I'm, we're actually going to talk about that in a later part of this episode um uh, but um you could put it on here if you wanted to um so let's say you want that but you don't want to see it all the time it's you, you use it every once in a while just right click on it hide sheet and it's gone from the bottom and you can see it says oh blah 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 blah, blah. and then in order to see it again you just have to go to all sheets but it's still there so that wraps up basically everything on my um my master spreadsheet um i i have a couple different things that i use i've got my master spreadsheet i've got an attendance document that i use uh, an instrument inventory uh, and whatnot but um we will get into that in separate parts of this episode um was there anything that i, I that you saw on here that you'd like me to go into a little bit further depth on no i think there's uh there's enough content there to give people uh, a, a lot to work at and and definitely having this sheet available is going to be useful i know i'm going to take a look at this sheet and play around with it um, and see if I can learn the language. And I think that's the most important thing of all of this is it's really what once you learn the computer's language, just like we learned, like you said, how we learned how to play music, once you recognize patterns and you understand um, how things fit together, just like you're, you're, you know, you start recognizing rhythm groups of rhythms, um, it'll all start making sense. Uh, but we all know that the only way that we learn how to do that is just by repetition. You get in there and you just play around with it and and you see what you can make sense of hmm. yeah and if and if you do uh play around with some stuff and you find cool stuff feel free to let us know um you know comment on this video or you could send us an email um i would love to find out more about how all of this stuff works so, you know i'm always looking for ways to you know streamline uh information that i use um so if there's nothing else, uh, thanks for joining us uh, for this episode. Uh, I hope that you got a lot out of this. Um, it sounds like, Andrew, you you did. So woohoo, goal achieved. Um, uh, join us next time. We're going to be looking at my how I uh, keep track of attendance and gather data for different trends and whatnot. So hope that you have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.